Welcome to Ask a Patent Lawyer with noted inventor and patent attorney, Chris Majorana. Each week, Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions. Now, here's Chris Majorana. What is an interference? Uh, interference is a dispute between two parties that have a patent on the same invention. Okay, so the patent office can potentially have two patents issued on 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 the you know the same thing, the same subject matter. That's right. So it sounds funny, and when I said two patents issuing, there's there's different scenarios as well. So if the patent office is aware that there's a pending application that has conflicting claims with a issued patent, they can potentially declare an interference. And that's the point where the two parties get to uh, fight over who gets the rights to those that conflicting subject matter. Okay. Um, are the issues in an interference similar to uh, patent prosecution issues? Sure. There, there's a lot of similar issues. There's a lot of similar terminology that's used. One thing that uh, happens a lot is they. there can be a scenario where you have to file a priority motion that's similar to an affidavit that you might do in a patent application. So in a patent application, you would try to swear behind someone else's reference, meaning that you'd say that I invented this uh, subject matter before the filing date of the subject matter that's in the reference. And when you do that, then you say, all right, so that reference doesn't count against you in your patent prosecution and that your patent moves forward. In an interference, you, uh, you don't file an affidavit so much as you file a motion for priority. Then you have a bunch of supporting documents in that motion. Okay, so how much detail goes into a motion? Each motion is fairly complicated. Uh, I think this is an area where our firm can save a potential client a lot of money. Um, we, when we worked on the interference that we had, there was we, we figured roughly three or four times the amount of time that would be spent on an appeal brief that you'd file in a, a patent application would be the amount of time for each motion. Okay, how many are, how many are needed? Every answer is about the same where it, it depends, but you know, in, in the interference that we did, there were, uh, we filed seven motions and the other side filed six motions. Okay. Isn't it typically more than that? Yeah. There's a lot of national quotes that are out there that, uh, the interference specialists will charge quite a lot to do each motion. I think with the level of expertise that we have in patent prosecution and uh, we had a lot of files that were very uh, date sensitive where you do the timelines that say, you know, here's the reference, here's your diligence, you were, uh, your reduction to practice, and you have to be diligent between a certain amount of time. There's a little bit of a difference in an interference where they're a lot more particular about each time frame that you're showing diligence than in a patent application because there's such a serious uh, issue at stake. Okay, so is there a, a follow-up to a motion? Yes. After a motion, you know, one party will file a motion, then the other party will file what's called an opposition. And then the original party gets to file what's called a reply. So it's a motion, then an opposition, then a reply. Okay, how much does all that cost? Yeah, a proposition is going to be about the same cost as the original motion. So the other side files their motion. To file your opposition against it, you have to detail out quite a few things. It's kind of like a patent application appeal brief where there's such a long structured format to these things that you just you're bound by that. So it's hard to cut a lot of corners and uh, get to the chase, but, you know, we, we can still be reasonably efficient. So an opposition is going to be about the cost of a 
a primary motion, and then the replies, probably about half that, maybe even less if uh, replies even needed. You should file a reply in general just to get the last word in, is, is my general theory. Okay, so are depositions needed? They, they can be needed. So one of the tricks is, or one of the red tapes is that to get testimony into the file to use in your motion, you need to have your inventor or witness file uh, a declaration. So it's a sworn written record that puts their statements in the file. So at the end of that, there's a paragraph that the patent office makes you put in that says, by signing this declaration, I realize that I'm subject to being deposed. So the primary testimony gets presented in written form. The other side has the chance to uh, to depose that witness to try to you know, cross-reference and maybe uh, find some inconsistencies with that. So there's a strategy that you only want to present the minimum number of witnesses needed in order to win the case. Every witness you present, even in a written declaration format, is subject to a uh, potential deposition. This sounds like a, a lot. It sounds a lot like litigation, is it? Yeah, it is. There's been uh, descriptions that say an interference is a mini litigation at the patent office level. Um, I think that's fairly accurate. It's it's a little bit less involved because you can start off your uh, your testimony with a written declaration so that can be carefully crafted to get your point across and there's a lot of supporting documents to that and the, the depositions really aren't a big big part of it and then there's going to be no live presentation like you would have in a litigation you just you're presenting your file in paper format thanks for listening to ask a patent lawyer with noted inventor and patent attorney chris Majorana. join us next time as Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions.